Welcome to Graceful Warriors, where listeners lace up their combat boots and join Monica Hansen, a former Desert Storm Army Sergeant with seven years of service. Monica, along with her expert guests, provide real biblical advice for navigating the spiritual battles of life. The show begins now. Hello, this is a sample of what you could do if you were to go on a typical deep dive Bible study. Overwhelming, huh? Yeah, I know. Today, we're going to discover practical tips and insights in studying God's words. Hey, I'm your host, Monica Hansen, and welcome again to the show. I just have a few announcements before we go into an amazing study that I have. I have found today. And as I dug deeper, I was like, wow, this is really cool. So first of all, I just want to say thank you to you, the viewers and you, even the listeners out there in the audio world, Spotify, Amazon, good pods, everywhere that you guys are out there. Thank you for your support. Thank you for coming on here each and every week and checking out our episodes. And I just wanted to make this two announcements for you. So check it out. We have, and I know I put it out there this week already. I believe it was Tuesday. We have a Graceful Warrior store and it's amazing. Uh, The name of the store, and I made this name up myself. It's called the Graceful Warrior Swag, right? like that swag thing I got going on right there in my hair right now. (laughs) So anyway, the Graceful Warrior swag on the website, which I'm going to give you, well, let's do it right now. You know what? For those that are watching this video on Rumble and YouTube, and you're, for those that are listening, check us out over on YouTube or the alternative free speech uh, platform on Rumble. Uh, Running the link on the ticker below your screen right now, our website is called graceful-swag.printify.me. And right now we're running a sale. It's 15% off everything in the store. It's not like just hats or just a t-shirt, everything. So you can get 15% off the sticker. If you want a Graceful Warrior sticker, go check it out. It's the boot that says lace up the combat boots. Slap that on your computer, slap that on your car, wherever you like. And everything is 15% off right now. And sale is running for two weeks, only two weeks, y'all. So grab that sale right now. Don't miss it. They have a coffee mug on there that I'm going to order. And on that coffee mug, it's like plain black coffee mug. But When you pour your coffee in in the morning to come on the Graceful Warrior podcast for Coffee Break with God, as you pour the coffee, the heat, it's one of those color morphing mugs. And as you pour your coffee in, it will show the actual logo art of the Graceful Warrior, which is the boot that says lace up the combat boots. The whole mug turns red. It has the boot on there, the roses, everything. It is a cool mug. So I've got to add that to my collection I know my husband's not going to like it. He'd be like, how many coffee cups do you need? That's kind of like asking girls, like, how many pairs of shoes do you need, right? I mean, we totally need every basic color to match every outfit, right? (laughs) Come on now, girls. And then if you haven't already, go ahead and you can jump on my website. Let me show you that one. There's a ticker down below. My own personal author website is monica-hansen.com. On there, you could follow me on there, and we will display every new episode on that page. And you can also click on the link on Amazon link, Barnes & Noble link, and that will take you straight over to go purchase my book, Captured by His Heart. It's an inspired book that the Lord gave all of these poems over the four-year course of time. 
And it's amazing how he captured my heart through all of that. It's like, you know, those questions that we all have at some point in our life before coming to the Lord of what is my purpose here? Why do I matter so much to God? What is heaven like? And just all of those questions and more that we have as an unbeliever. And it's actually God capturing my heart through those poems as I begin to discover him through the poems. And he just shared his love on me. He shared his, his patience with me. And it's a great, great gift for those that are on college um, vacation right now. Give them something. You know, they're looking for that purpose. They're asking all those questions, who God is, who they are, where they fit in life. It's a great book for those that are in college. It's a great book for those maybe that have just come to the Lord. And even for the unbeliever, you know, we ask those questions of the Lord all of the time throughout life until we actually come to the Lord. Then we begin to see his purpose in our life, our destiny um, that we are to run and complete that race that's set before us. Amen. And so that is what God has done. And it is blessing. I get so many people that come to me and emails and Facebook posts going, oh my gosh, Monica, I love this book. He is capturing my heart. I see it. And it has just touched many, many hearts. So grab it. If you grab the book, hey, don't forget to leave me a review. Let me know what you thought of the book. Um, leave a comment there. That will help get those sales out there and to touch other lives so people can see that everybody out there is reading the book and to be able to share it with your loved ones and your friends and just share it out there, right? Let's, 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 allow God to capture others' hearts. Amen. All right. So I want to talk today about practical tips and insights in studying God's word. And believe me, it ain't all that, right? I mean, you got strong concordances, every translation of the Bible. Then you've got little devotionals that you find. Then you got journals that you find. Then you got New Living Bible. Maybe you've got the NIV, and then you've got the dictionary and the strong concordance, right? So overwhelming. Where do you even begin, right? Well, I found two studies that maybe will help you out in studying the Word of God because you know what? It's helped me. But for right now, I'm going to put this stack away. Ooh, right? Phew. Well, let's take a look at something. Did you know, first of all, did you know this? This is an interesting fact. And I want to read my notes here just so I get it right just for you. Did you know that the Bible has been translated into over 3,300 languages? I mean, you think about that and you're like, okay, off the top of my head, we start thinking of, okay, you have Russian, you have China, you have English, Spanish, French, Italian, German, and, and you just start thinking of all of these places. But can you actually make it to a hundred languages? Much less, they have documented 3,300 languages. And you're like, well, what does this have to do with practical tips and insights in studying the word of God? Well, hold on a sec. Let me tell you, see, this is huge because in 3,300 languages, that tells me we're not the only ones trying to figure out how to read God's word, how to understand God's word, much less how to study God's word, right? See, there's an important fact right there. So it's understanding that the Bible, it's not a book. It's not a fable. And oftentimes I hear like so many 
radio stations. Like when I'm driving out in the morning, I put my favorite radio station on Christian radio station and that preacher or somebody, they have that, that typical sentence. We're going to look at the character of Ruth or, or look at all of the characters in the Bible. I'm sorry, but these are not characters in the Bible, right? They are actually individuals in the word of God. These people lived way back before Christ set foot on the earth, right? So Ruth was a real person. Naomi was a real person. King David was a real person. Jehoshaphat, Pharaoh, you know, all of these people, Saul to Paul, they're all real. They're not characters. The character of a person we think of is like that, the character of Monica. She likes to laugh. She has a good time with her friends. Um, she's very strong in her faith. That's describing the character of Monica. But these people are actually real in the word of God. And so, we have to understand that the word of God, it's not just some book. It's not just some fairy tale. It's definitely not boring. I mean, you think about it. If you want love and romance, where would you go? For those that know the word of God, where would you go if someone says, I want to be, read about love and romance? Well, if you know the word, you would actually say, well, I would tell him to go to Song of Solomon, right? It talks about the love between a husband and a wife. And you're just like, okay, well, where would you go if you wanted like danger and war? Well, pff, good Lord, that's practically the entire word of God, right? Pick a book, you know, where would you go for people that defied God? You know, there's so many different stories. Jonah defied God. He didn't want to go to Nineveh. So you see what I'm saying? The word of God is not boring. And we have to look at it that way. It's just like these are men and women that went through life. And here's what they went through. And here's what we can learn from them. You know, I love Psalms and Proverbs because it talks, well, Psalms talks about David's heart. David was so up and down, up and down, but he had such a worship for the Lord and an awe and a reverence and fear of the Lord. And it's amazing to even read Proverbs where it talks about just seek after wisdom. And you know, when I, and this is a, a study that's coming up later on, as I would begin to read uh, uh, Proverbs, I'm going to turn my fan on. So I'm going to hope that, um, or not my little fan, my little air conditioner. So hold on. I don't want it to echo in my mic. And so I'm hoping this doesn't distract the whole study. Give me a second. Because it is hot. All right. Hopefully that didn't, that doesn't mess you guys all up with the sound. But I love how... In Proverbs, I just got done with Proverbs. I'm almost done with Ecclesiastes, but I began to notice all of the statements of the fear of the Lord. And so I began to count them. And I was like, this is interesting. How many times does the Lord say, you have to have the fear of the Lord? And every single time I started reading, I was like, there's one. There's one, there's one. And you know, you hear, you hear every preacher talk about the fear of the Lord. And you're just, for a while it baffled me. And I know this isn't even the topic. I have to even, I have to get on the topic, but hear me out on this. Is that the fear of the Lord, I began to pay attention to each time and I began to highlight them. I began to count them. And I started noticing that the fear of the Lord is an array of different things. It's seeking his knowledge. It's seeking his wisdom. It's seeking his counsel. And I counted 17 times in Proverbs that God says that we are to fear him. And then 
there's the 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 rabbit hole of looking at numbers what does 17 mean according to god and and so you, you know bible studies and that's the whole part of the bible studies man it could go down a rabbit trail right so the bible it's not boring at all you can learn so much and it's you know sometimes we get into the habit of well i have to read and then you read and you go i have no idea what was just said or you just read and go check i read the bible today and there are so many methods out there and it's allowing god to go i want to teach you this i want to show you this i want to challenge um uh, your heart or i want to convict your heart so that you could repent and return back to me and it's opening the word of god and saying lord what do you want to show me today how can i get encouragement from you how can i renew my mind in your word right because the lord says that we have to renew our minds daily in the word of god and through prayer as well and so there's many methods like i just showed you at the very beginning the stack of books there's many methods to studying the word of god but i've learned that the most important thing to remember is the concept and taking things out of context so many pastors that we know that are out there that can big you know the big name churches you got Joel Osteen you know that takes so many things out of context and that's where a lot of pastors get into trouble you know and 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 even people that are sharing maybe here like podcasting bible studies videos youtube's got an array of people that think that they know the word of god and yet you're like nope that doesn't line up with the word so it's being careful that we don't take our study time and what god says we take things out of context and it's that's why it's so important to open up and say lord teach me open my heart open my ears open my eyes and to be able to take in the food that that spiritual food that god gives us and i remember i remember so many times like when i would first read the word of god i was just like maybe some of you out there where it was like i'm just going to read the word and because i know that i should and as i did that i was like i'm not getting anything out of this but there was a hunger in me to keep going and i started getting like whole oh. next thing you know i have like chips and salsa <laughs> i'm not kidding i would have chips and salsa cuz you know i'm mexican right i have to have my chips and salsa <laughs> and i would start having my chips and salsa and i was like oh oh paul's in trouble now oh why did he do this and i would start getting into the stories well then it became like my heart started opening up my ears started opening up and i began to see the lesson in it and so our first goal must be to understand what the original or intended meaning of the passages that we read all throughout you know having a strong concordance and a dictionary not a bad idea is it i began to bring mine aside and go Hmm. What does this word actually mean? Maybe your Bible has a dictionary in the back or a small concordance back there where you can look up. Maybe look up pride for example and see all the different scripture references on pride. There's just so many different ways. But I want to talk real briefly. I have found two methods. And number 1, I want to look at book studies. You know, the this Bible study method focuses either on a complete book in the Bible or specific part of the book such as like specific chapter or a range of verses or just a single verse itself and begin a study like that. 
with the chapter and verse by verse method and with the study of the overall book, the principles and the goals are the same, right? So, for example, in order to do a thorough book study, we must necessarily also study the context of the individual chapters and the verses, right? So, for example, whoa, what was that? So, for example, we were to, if we were to look at to do a thorough book study, we must necessarily also do the context of the individual and in, um, chapters and verses, right? So, in order to complete the study, that that, that particular verse or we need to also study the overall message of the chapter and a book that the verse is found in. Hopefully that makes sense. It's actually just studying chapter one, say of, of Psalms chapter one. And it is just studying that chapter and look and picking up all of those words out of there and deep diving into those words of that chapter. Does that make better sense? So, of course, whether it is on the individual, like, verse level or a complete book study, we must always consider the overall context of the whole Bible as well. Hopefully that makes sense. Then I want to look at topical studies. Like, right now, which it's amazing, is that my church on Wednesday nights we are doing this deep dive about the spirit, the Holy Spirit. And it's really great how my pastor brings in, he brings different videos of speakers that come in. Um, then he does a study. He's now brought in a book. So we are learning so much just about the Holy Spirit. And it's great because you don't hear a whole lot of teaching of pastors that do that. And it's it's amazing. I've wanted to learn about the Holy Spirit in a way that I have never learned before. I mean, we know that he, he is the third Trinity, the third person in the Trinity, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And it was like, okay, then I knew that the Holy Spirit is our, he's our advocate. He, he will speak to us what he hears from the throne of God, right? But that's all that I knew. And now it's just learning so much more about the Holy Spirit. So that's what I mean about like a topical study. And there's many varieties of like topical studies. There's right now the big one of studying end times. People are, are wanting to know the end times so much. And then other examples, you got biographical studies. You got where we study all, all the uh, Bible what it says about a particular person. If we look at Paul or if we look at Moses or Noah and we just look up all the aspects of what it says about that particular person or even just word studies, what the word of God says about love, what the word of God says about renewing our mind. And of course you can't, you can't skip the armor of God. I mean, that's what this whole podcast is about. It is, it is incorporating the armor of God in all of our lessons, in all of our guest interviews, and, and to show and encourage everybody the importance and the application of the armor of God in our everyday lives. It's actually, actually the, our podcast, the Graceful Warrior podcast, is the only podcast that is now showing the important application of the armor of God in every episode. We're starting to do that in all of our guest interviews and showing that no matter the triumphs, no matter the, the struggles, no matter what the trials that they go through, it is finding that piece of armor that they put on during that time to get them through. So there's a good example right there of doing a topical study on the armor of God. So, it's, it's an amazing, amazing way to do a deep dive and understand 
wow, I know what the armor of God is now. I understand it. And it was actually one of my uh, listeners way back when I first studied. And I went in and I was asking them, I was like, hey, what kind of studies do you guys want me to actually do? And this particular listener actually emailed me and she was like, you know, I know about the armor of God, but I don't know it completely. There's parts I don't understand. Can you talk about the armor of God? And I was like, okay, let's do it. Right. And then next thing you know, when I started doing a deep dive, I mean, it took us six weeks and now I'll, I won't forget the importance of the armor of God. It became the foundation of the podcast, the graceful warrior, putting on that armor, lace up the combat boots. And that's how we, we branched out. So topical studies are important for understanding all that the Bible teaches on a particular subject or, or topic. But we got to be careful, though, that the conclusions drawn from a topical study do not come from taking verses out of their original context or systematically just organizing uh, all of that and, and understanding a specific topic and taking it all out of context. Does that make sense? we got to be really careful. And that's where our teachings got to be very, very lined up with the word of God. As the Bereans did with Paul, they studied verse by verse to make sure that Paul was in alignment with scripture. So see, in studying the Bible, it is really quite beneficial to even use different Bible study methods at different times. For me, I found just book studying right now has been my favorite and I'm going book by book by book and spending time in those chapters and really in going in and finding out, okay, what is the writer trying to say in this chapter and taking that in and just thinking about it and allowing it to kind of marinate in my heart, marinate in my mind and going, okay, and there's times where I've actually had to go back and read that chapter. So sometimes we might want to devote extended time to do a book study, while at other times we benefit greatly or, you know, from doing some type of topical study. Whichever type of study we're doing, we must follow. I have found three basic concepts, right? Well, let me do two. Well, let me back up. Let me do three. Hold on one second. So let me do, um, let me do three. So number one, one of the basic concepts is, to, is just straight up observation, paying attention. What does the Bible say? And then two, I would say interpretation. What does the Bible mean right here? You know, there's some verses where, I'm reading and I'm like, I will actually sit there and read. And I'm like, Lord, I don't understand what you mean right here. And sometimes I'll close my Bible and just think about that. What do you mean? Pray about it and wait for God to answer. And other times I'm like, okay, wow. Other times I'm like, Okay, let me start looking up these words. That's where I'm pulling out my, my concordance. That's where I'm pulling out my dictionary and go, okay, first of all, let me find out what that means first. And then I can go from there. And then I have found that number three, the application process. I have found that the application um, process is how does the Bible, the biblical truth apply to like my life, right? Uh, or how is this passage relevant to me today? No matter what method of, of Bible study we do, we got to be careful to rightly divide the word of God. So they are, we are workmen that need not be ashamed. You can look that one up in 2 Timothy 2.15, right? And then, did you know that the Bible 
has been translated in over 3,300 languages. Like I said earlier, 3,300, 3,300 languages. So you're not the only one trying to figure out how to study the word of God, right? Well, as I get ready to close today, how will you study the word of God? The top of that we look at just book study, reading an entire book in the Bible and studying the concepts or people within the book, right? Then there's topical studies, researching people, researching words, and using the entire Bible as your source of information. No matter what type of study we do, it's important to understand we don't take things out of context and study to show yourself approved under God. Hey, that's all I have for today. I hope this blessed you. I hope this showed you and gave you some practical tips and insights in studying God's word through book study or just on a word or a topic. And then in closing, I want to thank you, the guest, or not the guest. I want to thank you. Well, you kind of are a guest, right? I want to thank you, the listener, you, the viewer, and say thanks for coming and joining us today on The Graceful Warrior. I appreciate you guys every week giving us support, giving us some input. Let me know what you think about this episode. How are you studying the Word of God? What practical tips and insights do you have that you can maybe share with our listeners and viewers and maybe understanding the Word of God more simply? And then join me this Friday. We have an amazing, amazing guest, Rob Brown. He's going to talk about Christian Business Alliance. He has some great, great ideas on how to bring the Word of God and how to bring your testimony and sharing sharing Jesus in the workforce. And you're like, whoa, wait a minute, Monica. The world doesn't want Jesus in the workplace. But you know what? After talking to him this week and after recording his episode, man, it is easy and he gives us some practical tips he also shares with us if maybe maybe you've lost your job because you have shared jesus in the workplace well he gives us an organization that will help you fight back and so we're going to go ahead and talk to rob this friday from he is the ceo director of christian business alliance so don't forget to join us this friday on that until next time Remember, lace up those combat boots. It's a battlefield out there. Remember to pray for President Trump, that God will protect him. And until then, stay nice and cool out there. Grab some shade. Remember to hydrate. Stay safe out there. Bye-bye. Thank you for tuning in to Graceful Warriors. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. For more information and updates, please visit the websites, thegracefulwarrior.com or monica-hansen.com. Until next time, remember to lace up those combat boots.